Welcome everyone, it's the top of the hour, so we'll get started. I'm Dio Agusbeck in Houston. I'd like to welcome you to today's GLOMCON seminar series. Today, our talk is renal manifestations and rheumatologic diseases. And we are very excited and welcome our speaker, Dr. Surya Sashan. Good morning, good, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to all my esteemed colleagues uh, around the globe. I first would like to thank the organizers of this GLOMCON webinar, Dr. Ali, Dr. Dia, for, for inviting me to share uh, some of the you know, some of the aspects of rheumatologic diseases and their renal manifestations. This is a large um, subject, as you all know, and I know you have also encountered in your practice uh, kidney disease associated with various rheumatologic diseases. But I would like to, the, the premise of the organizers and myself is to create that awareness that there are lesions and there are variations of kidney lesions and kidney manifestations um, in the setting of other rheumatologic diseases and not only systemic lupus, which is the prime example of an autoimmune disease or, or rheumatologic disease. So since I'm a pathologist, you get to see some pathology slides as well. I work uh, with uh, uh, a team of uh, rheumatology colleagues at Hospital for Special Surgery, and I have learned a great deal from them with uh, interacting with them, uh, with their patients and, um, and, and their experience. So I'm just going to probably graze a few of these entities and their renal manifestations, as this is a large topic. <clears throat> to begin at the beginning, autoimmunity is defined as a state in which the immune system recognizes the body's own tissues, leading to a breakdown of normal balance in the host defense uh, immune system between the various components that help to protect the body from exogenous and endogenous agents. A variety of pathogenetic mechanisms are involved in this development of autoimmunity and uh, disease uh, within the body. Could be cell-mediated, humoral-mediated, and various forms of the hypersensitivity reactions that we have learned in our basic sciences. The processes of initiation and perpetuation are complex and diverse with multiple pathways involving inflammatory pathways, genetic pathways, um, metabolics, uh, metabolomic pathways, and proteomic pathways. So with genetic influences and environmental triggers that might begin this. <coughs> Excuse me. The, these diseases, autoimmune diseases, can be generalized in a manner of systemic diseases, affecting more than one organ, or they can be organ-specific. Most of disease, these diseases in the rheumatology world are now well delineated with diagnostic criteria and classification systems, and they are updated constantly from uh, time to time, and I will be showing you the latest classification, uh, disease classification of the diseases that I'm going to discuss today. So you'll be aware. It is always good to know what criteria will and the serologic profile will will come together to specify a certain rheumatologic disease. Renal disease uh, in such settings, in the autoimmune diseases or in the rheumatologic diseases, can be immune mediated as a result of the underlying. Uh, autoimmune mechanisms or the pathogenic mechanisms that are operative, or these patients get a whole lot of medications and uh, therapeutic protocols, which can also harm the kidney. So the drug-induced part is something that we have to be mindful of. And of course, the chronic inflammatory state, if it is not um, broken, if it is not stopped, can also cause additional uh, chronic changes such as amyloidosis. So today I will give a brief introduction in terms of the general kidney involvement in autoimmune diseases. Uh, 
And then these are some of the diseases that I will touch. I will only have one or two slides of systemic lupus because we all know that and everyone has been discussing that most of the time and we see that most often in our practices.